David Being Bullied by Asia Foster David was in his classroom. Then his principal, Mrs. Wilbert, walked into his class. She was with another student. Hello, class. Meet Charlie. He transferred from another school. Now he's here to join us. Hi, Charlie. Welcome. Class, let's give Charlie a big welcome applaud, David's teacher, Mrs. Smith, replied. All the students began to clap and welcome Charlie. Welcome, Charlie, they shouted. Guys, relax. The president didn't walk in here, Charlie replied. Then the class burst out laughing. Ha ha, we have a comedian, said Billy from the back. Settle down, students, Miss Smith told the class. Charlie, you don't have to be the president to get a great welcome. Here in this class, we celebrate everyone, Miss Smith told Charlie. Well, whatever, sure. Whoa, 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 attitude, replied Alexis. Charlie will be a great student. Just give him time to adjust. He'll catch on very soon, the principal, Mrs. Wilbert, replied. I'll see you around, Charlie. If you ever need anything, my office is down the hall. Welcome again, said the principal. Then she left the room. Charlie, you can sit next to David, said Mrs. Smith. Come on, Charlie. I'll show you around at lunchtime, said David. Charlie went to sit next to David. There was an empty desk waiting. This is the best class in the whole school, David told Charlie. Hey, listen up. Don't talk to me. I don't talk to losers said Charlie as he whispered softly to David. Mrs. Smith, the teacher, didn't hear Charlie, but she saw the boys talking. She thought they were getting along. Look, class, Charlie has a new friend already, Mrs. Smith told the class. She saw David smiling and thought they were getting along. David felt very sad. No one has ever called him a loser, and no one ever hurt him like this. He also remembered his mother telling him to be kind to everyone. So, he just put a smile on his face. He wanted to give Charlie a chance. This will be a great school year, he thought to himself. Class, take out your science books, said Mrs. Smith. David opened his book bag to get his science book, but he felt Charlie's foot on his toes. Ouch, ouch, David shouted out. It was Charlie squeezing his toes under the table. David, what's wrong? Miss Smith asked. Nothing, Miss Smith. He just got bit by a mosquito under the table, replied Charlie. Don't worry, David. No more bugs will hurt you while I'm here. They'll have to go through me first, said Charlie. <laughs> the class laughed. Is that true, David? asked Miss Smith. Yes. I guess, replied David. David is always honest, so his teacher believed him. I have to let the office aware that Mosquitoes is getting in here. I'm sorry that happened, David, said his teacher. Let's move on to class. Hey, loser, you just earned a point keeping your mouth shut. The last loser had a big mouth. I got in trouble. And you're a dummy, said Charlie. The teacher couldn't hear Charlie because he whispered. The day went on, and it was time for school to end. David wasn't his usual self when his mom picked him up from school. Hi, David. How are you? Okay, I guess, David replied. One of those days, I see, said his mother. Well, today I'm taking you to the park so you can ride your bike. We can also get ice cream. That sounds great, Mama. David felt better. He already forgot about Charlie's behavior towards him. David and his mother went to the park and had a great time. Later, they got home from the park. David was having his dinner and began to think about Charlie. David, remember to do your homework after dinner. Yes, Mama, replied David. After dinner, David was completing his homework and began to sweat. He felt scared to face Charlie at school the next day. He was also scared to tell his mother. He knows his mother will go to his school. I don't want my classmates to think I'm a baby, he thought to himself. 
Plus, he wanted to make Charlie feel happy since he was a new student. Mama, can I ask you a question? David, you can ask me anything, his mom replied. What do you do when someone doesn't like you? Well, you can't force people to like you, David. But you can tell them to learn more about you. Just keep being who you are, son. Show them kindness. You know kindness goes a long way. God says to be kind. I know that, Mama, replied David. Are you okay, David? Why did you ask me that? Is anyone bothering you, son? Just let me know and someone will have to answer. No one messes with my baby. <laughs> David laughed. Mama, I'm not a baby. I know, David. But in my eyes, you'll always be my baby. I love you. I love you too, Mama. David finished his homework. Then it was time for bed. David was in his room laying down, but he couldn't sleep. So he decided to pray. Dear God, it's me, David. You know my heart. I try my best to be a good kid. Well, Mama told me to pray daily. Okay, tonight's prayer is very important. It's an emergency and I really need your help. You've seen Charlie in action, God. The big bully. I don't know what's wrong with this kid, but please change him. Change him. Change him. David drifted off to sleep, but he kept talking in his sleep. Change him. Change Charlie. David started to dream. It was Charlie chasing him in his dream. David was running with speed, away from Charlie. Ah! Charlie screamed out loud. David stopped running and went back to help. Charlie was on the ground. He had tears running down his face. Don't worry, Charlie. I'll help you, David told Charlie. Charlie had tripped on a stone while chasing David and fell. Blood was coming out of Charlie's right knee. And David was feeling so sorry for Charlie. But he was brave. David called 911. It's okay, Charlie. Don't worry. I won't leave your side. I'll be here until the ambulance comes, said David. Thank you, my friend. But I haven't been nice to you. Why are you helping me? said Charlie. Before David could answer, he woke up. He woke up with a big smile. The dream felt real. He was happy he helped Charlie. David believes God changed Charlie, but he felt guilty not telling his mother what's going on at school. He had made a promise not to hide anything from her. I better tell Mama, he thought to himself. David brushed his teeth and got dressed. He went into the living room to talk to his mother. Good morning, Mama. David was ready to start his day. Good morning, my son. Well, I have a problem at school. There's this new kid. Say no more. David Jacob Solomon Matthews. Who's troubling you? Tell me. Please tell me. I'm going to your school. Wait, wait, Mama. Let me explain. Okay, David, go right ahead. Well, Charlie is a new student. He sits next to me. I thought he was nice at first until he started to hurt me. David's mom hugged him. Oh, David, I'm so sorry, son. Mama, I know I'm not a dumb person. Charlie thinks I am, said David. David's mother picked up the phone. Then she called David's principal to have a meeting. The principal agreed to have a meeting with David's mother and Charlie's parents. Don't worry, son. No one will bother you at school anymore. Thanks, Mama, said David. David, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for being so brave. Telling me or an adult like a teacher is the only way to stop a bully, said David's mother. Yes, Mama. I should have told my teacher right away, said David. Well, I'm happy you told me. You are a very smart young man. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You know you're an eagle. Thank you, Mama. Charlie should see my grades. I never get less than 90s on my test. And even if I fail, 
I'm smart enough to keep trying for better grades, replied David. <laughs> That's my David, said his mother. David and his mother went to meet the principal at David's school. Hello, boys. How are you today? asked the principal. Hi, Principal Wilbert, both the boys replied. What's going on? Are you boys getting along? The principal asked the boys. Well, Charlie is a bully. He has been hurting me in class. He's been stepping on my toes, under the desk. He also calls me a loser. David spoke up and reported Charlie's actions towards him. Oh my goodness, Charlie. Are you hurting him? Charlie's mother asked. No, Mom, he's a big, big liar, replied Charlie. You're not telling the truth, Charlie. Stop, said David. Mommy, he's lying. He's lying. That's a bad thing you're doing, Charlie. David began to cry. <laughs> Mama, what's wrong with Charlie? He's such a mean person. I don't understand. I would never hurt anyone. I love everyone, said David. David's mother hugged her son, and everyone in the room was silent after David spoke up. They all believed he was telling the truth. It's okay, David. Don't cry. We are here to protect you. Then Charlie's mother began to talk to her son. Charlie, ever since your dad left, you have been acting out. I've already placed you at three different schools, thinking it's the school, but it's you. The problem is within you. Do you expect me to believe the sweet boy is telling lies, son? Charlie couldn't hold back his emotions any longer. His eyes were filled with tears. Daddy, Daddy, why? Why did you have to leave? I want my dad back. Charlie began to cry. He missed his father. Everyone in the room felt sorry for Charlie. They realized he was hurting. Oh, Charlie, I'm so sorry, his mother replied, and she hugged her son. Charlie's father and I have separated. He moved to another country with his sweetheart, but that's another story. Charlie's mother explained the reason her son is hurting. I miss my daddy. Daddy! Charlie cried even more. <laughs> David went over to hug Charlie. It's okay, Charlie, I'm here. We should show love to one another, no matter what's missing from our lives. I never met my dad, and I don't have any grandparents. Still, I soar like an eagle. I got on the honor roll and made my mama proud. Most importantly, I'm very happy in my heart. I've got God. David gave Charlie some encouraging words of advice. Thank you, David, said Charlie. He had stopped crying and began to smile. Look at your wonderful mother, Charlie. She loves you. One day your dad will realize what he's missing. He'll leave his sweetheart and come running back to you. You'll see, said David. <laughs> Everyone in the room laughed. <laughs> David, you don't have a father? Still, you're such a smart kid. I saw your math papers the other day. Bro, you scored a hundred on the test. <laughs> Everyone in the room laughed again. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry for being a bully, David. You are my best friend from now on. It's okay. You're forgiven. Now... Let's both do well in school, my friend, said David. The adults in the room were just speechless. They didn't need to say much. The boys communicated very well, including resolving the issues. David had given Charlie some advice. It's never okay to bully anyone, boys. Kindness is the best way to live, the principal added. But David, what you displayed today is great characteristics of what our school is about. Brotherhood and kindness with love, said the principal. Then Charlie put his hand out for David to shake. Oh, for sure, dude. <laughs> the boys laughed and shook hands. <laughs> wow, look at this big turnaround. I'm so proud of you boys, said the principal, Mrs. Wilbert. This school wants to see love and unity. We treat everyone with love and respect, said Mrs. Wilbert as she smiled.
Hello? Hello, Charlie. This is your dad. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry for not being in your life. Charlie! Charlie! I'm proud of you, my son. I'm so proud of you. Please! Please! I'm sorry. Charlie, I'm sorry. Ooh.